Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A level maths. Here we're going to look at solving differential equations so we can answer questions from exercise 11j. So what we're going to be doing here is solving a differential equation. What that means is it's going to have a dy by dx in it and on the other side of the equation there's going to be x's and y's and we're going to have to solve this equation by doing the reverse of differentiation which is integration. So using integration we're going to solve a function or an equation that looks like this where we've got dy by dx on one side and we've got some function of x times some function of y on the other side. So this g of y here means it might be like sine y, cos y, just some function of y. Now the way that we're going to do this is we're going to treat the dy and the dx as two separate components on the top and bottom of a fraction equivalently. So what we're going to do here is move all the x's onto one side, the y's onto the other side. So what we're going to do here is we're going to split up this dy by dx here, treat it as a fraction, and times the other side, or times both sides effectively, by dx. And what will happen there is we'll get dy left on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side we're going to have f of x, g of y, and d of x and dx. The next thing we need to do is move all of the y terms onto the left hand side. Now at the moment all three of these terms here are being multiplied by each other so to get rid of a times by g of y we divide by g of y. So effectively what we've done here is in two steps we have moved all the y's onto the left hand side and all the x's onto the right hand side. And it's always going to be like that. We're always going to want the x terms or whatever's on the bottom of this fraction on the right hand side and whatever's on the top of this fraction here will be on the left hand side. And that's how we're going to solve this differential equation. But what are we going to do next to, to solve this? Well we've got the dx component here and the dy component here. The next thing we're going to do is now integrate both sides and since the terms are now fully separated into x parts and y parts we can now do that. If you remember anything that you need to integrate you for example if you've got sine x there's always going to be a dx component at the back and these dy and dx components here and here are effectively telling us the letter that we need to integrate with respect to. So 1 over g of y with respect to y we're going to integrate and f of x with respect to x we're going to integrate. So effectively what we've done here is just applied integration to both sides of our equation here. And then however the integration works that will be the solution to our uh, question here. The first question we're going to have a go at solving looks like this one here. We've got 1 plus x squared of dy by dx equals x times tan of y. Now remember we need to move all of the x terms onto the right hand side, all of the y terms onto the left hand side. So the first thing I can see here that's on the wrong side is this 1 plus x squared. And I'm hoping that we're going to times by dx. The first thing we're going to do is multiply by dx onto the other side. x terms need to be on the right, y terms need to be on the left. So the next thing I'm going to do is divide by tan y because that is on the wrong side. So divide by tan y and now I'm going to divide by 1 plus x squared, the thing I suggested we do at the start, it didn't really matter. We're going to divide by 1 plus x squared to move the 1 plus x squared onto the right hand side. And now you can see here that all the y's are on the left hand side, all the x's are on the other side and now we're going to integrate both sides. Now integrating 1 over tan, that is a little bit tricky. There is uh, a trig identity we can use here in that 1 over tan is the same as cot. So in this case here we're going to integrate cot instead. Now that's in the formula booklet. Uh, we, we can recall that from the formula booklet. So integrating cot of y, uh, grab our formula booklet and it's this one here. It's 1 over k ln sine kx. At the moment the k here is just a value 1. It's 1 times y. Uh, so k is 1 here. So it's going to be ln sine x on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side we're going to use a ln type integration. Think about it. If we want to differentiate the bottom term here we get 2x. 
And so we can't just create a two, we need to balance it out with a half at the front. So now we've got a perfect ln integration here. It's a half times ln one plus x squared plus c. Now you'll see here that we've only actually added on c onto one side, we've only added it onto this side here. We haven't plus c onto this side here. Effectively what you would do is you would add constants to both sides, but then you can group it together on one side. So let's say we add a onto this side here and we add b as the constant onto this side here. We can take away a onto the other side and it's now just one single constant on one side. So when you do uh, solving differential equations, you only need to add c onto one side. Okay. So the next thing we're now going to do is we're now going to rearrange this in terms of um, in terms of y. So the next thing we're going to do here is the only thing that's different between this line and the next line down below is that we have changed the c into a ln k. Now remember, any value, say 7 or 10 or minus 3, uh, can always be written as ln of something. So this here, we're just writing our constant in a slightly different way so that we can now group together our ln terms here. Notice how everything here is in terms of ln, so it's been much nicer if this c was in terms of a ln. And we've had to change the letter. It's no longer c, it's now k, because the number k, the number c, will change uh, once it's been learned. Okay, so that's the only thing that's different from this line to the next line. Sometimes we write a plus c as plus ln k instead. When do we do that? Well, we do that when we want to group together two LUNs on the right-hand side in this case. Now, when you do group together two LUNs, you actually, um, well, first of all, you would include the coefficient as a power inside the bracket, and then you will add the two LUNs together by multiplying the insides of the brackets together. Now, why have we done this? Now, what you can see here is now we've got a LUN of something equals LUN of something Therefore, those two somethings must equal each other. We can effectively now cancel out the ln from both sides. We couldn't have done that any time earlier on. So now in this case here, sine y is equal to k times by 1 plus x squared, all to the power of a half. This k here is effectively representing the constant of uh, integration here. Um, so as k varies, the solution is going to vary. Um, you can see here a graph sketch has been used to show us what it would look like for different values of k. Okay, next question here then. Find the particular solution of the differential blah 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 when x equals 1, y equals 4. Now what we've done previously uh, in the previous question when we had sine y equals k at bracket 1 plus x squared all to the power of a half. This was what's called the general solution. Why is it the general solution? Well, because it's this k here. We don't know what that k is. If we were given a coordinate, we could probably go ahead and work out what k is. And in this case here, we don't know what the value of k is. That's our constant of integration, effectively. Now, when we do have a coordinate, that we know our solution goes through, we can work out the value of k or the value of c in some cases. Um, and that's what we're going to do here to work out the particular solution. So let's get started. Uh, what we've got here to start off with is dy by dx equals minus 3 over y minus 2 over 2x plus 1, x plus 2. Now, the first thing we want to do is move x's onto the right, y's onto the left. So the first thing we'll do is divide by y minus 2, this term here, it's on the wrong side, it needs to be on the left hand side, and times by dx, we can do those two steps in one when we're feeling confident enough to do so. Then we're going to apply integration to both sides. Now the left hand side here, that looks like a nice easy integral, it's just going to be ln of y minus 2, but the right hand side here, that probably needs some um, other form of integration, maybe by partial fractions, because we've got two um, factors on the bottom of the fraction there. So I'll skip the step where we do it longhand, but this is what the partial fraction would look like. It'd be 1 over x plus 2 minus 2 over 2x plus 1. You'd need to show all of the separate parts of that if you're in an exam question, but this is how you would do it. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to now integrate the three components that we have here. So it's going to be ln of y minus 2 on the left hand side. For the first part of the integral here it's going to be ln of x plus 2 and then it's take away and then the bottom here perfectly differentiates to the top so it's going to be ln 2x plus 1. And instead of writing plus c on the end we're going to write ln k because it matches that we've got luns all the way across our question here. We won't always write ln k, we are going to in this case because it does match up nicely that we've got luns in all the different positions here. Now the next thing for us to do is to combine the right hand side. Uh, when you're taking away luns you actually sub when you actually divide inside the bracket and when you've got a plus k you use k as a scale factor multiplier inside your brackets. Now that we've got ln of something equals ln of something, we can now cancel out luns from both sides. So in this case here we're going to have y minus 2 equals k brackets x plus 2 over 2x plus 1. We could probably add the 2 onto the other side there, just so it looks a bit nicer. Now what we're going to do is apply x equals 4 and what so x equals 1 and y equals 4 so that we can work out what this value of k is. So in this case here, substituting the values in the correct position, y is 4, and both of the x's are the value 1. Work out what this needs to be and simplify your fractions, moving the stuff onto the other side where appropriate, and we work out that k needs to be the value 2. So the particular solution here is y equals 2, bracket x plus 2, over 2x plus 1, plus 2. So this thing here is what we refer to as the general solution. If you're ever asked to find the general solution, just keep your constant of integration in there. Or if you're asked to work out the particular solution, you plug in the coordinates and you work out what that constant of integration is. Okay, your turn to have a go at this question here then. Find the particular solution to this question here. Find the particular solution uh, to the following differential equation. Pause the video and try this question out. Right, okay then, let's have a go at this question here then. So what we want to do is we want to move all of the x's onto the right hand side, all of the y's onto the left hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is times by dx, divide by cos y, and divide by cos x. I'm going to do a lot of things all in one go here. So um, just recap, I'm going to times by dx, I'm going to times by, um, I'm going to divide by cos x, because the x term there is on the wrong hand side and the divide by cos y as well because that is on the right hand side whereas ideally I'd like on the left hand side where the dy is. So let's get to it then. I'm going to have sine y divided by cos y dy equals dx and then it's going to be cos x divided by another cos x so it's going to be 1 over cos squared. And then I apply integration to both sides. So you can see here I've done a lot of work all in one jump here. As long as you're confident in doing that, that's absolutely fine. The next thing I'm going to do is simplify what I've got on the left and the right hand side. So I'm integrating tan now. And on the right hand side I'm integrating sec squared. And both of these I know from the formula booklet. Um, tan y integrated is going to be ln sec y. And on the right hand side I'm going to get uh, tan x. And then I'm going to have a plus c on the right hand side. Great, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my solution like this. I don't think I'm going to rearrange it any further. It has no, um, it doesn't say anything in the question about writing it in the term y equals f of x. I'm just going to leave my answer like this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is plug in my coordinates. I've got x equals 0, y equals 0. So in this case here, when I do ln of sec 0, now how do you do sec of 0? You do 1 over cos of 0. I know that cos of 0 
is 1, so this is 1 over 1, which is just 1, so I've got ln of 1 on one side, and tan of 0, but that's 0 plus c. So plus c is equal to ln 1, but remember the ln 1 is just 0, so in this case here, c is my constant of integration that comes out to be 0. So my final answer then is this thing here that I integrated before, but I now know that c is 0, so I'll just write c as 0. So it's ln uh, modulus sec y equals tan, and that's my final answer. I don't really need to rearrange much further than this, um, otherwise it would look particularly ugly. Other forms of final answers could be sec y equals e to the tan x, but that looks absolutely horrible. I definitely wouldn't want to do that. Um, another way of writing it would be cos y equals e to the minus tan x. And then what I could write is y equals arc cos bracket e to the minus tan x. But that looks absolutely horrible. I definitely wouldn't want that as my final answer. I think I'd be happy keeping this as my final answer. So thanks very much for watching. Have a go at plenty of the exercises from uh, exercise 11J. Have a go at those problem solving questions, the exam style questions as well. And ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.